Hey guys, what's going on? In today's video, I wanted to share with you guys a fun little story. It's a good one for you guys to listen to. Not for me to have went through, but like five years later, I, I look back at it and I don't laugh, but I, you know, I just look back at it sometimes. And that's, that's the most I'll do. That, it hurt back then. <laughs> but anyways, this was when I was doing wedding photography full time. It happened about four or five years ago. So basically I shot my friend's engagement and they asked me to shoot their wedding as the photographer. So I was like, yeah, of course. I didn't do videography, so my clients hired somebody separate from me to do the videography. So sometimes you'll, you'll have a company that does both photography and videography, or you'll have just a photographer that only does photography and you have to go find somebody else to do your video. So again, sometimes you, like someone like me, I only do photography, they would have to find somebody separate just so you guys are kind of aware of that. So the person that they got for videography actually does photography as their main job, but they also have a video team. But since my clients only needed videography, that photographer kind of assumed the role as the videographer but, and he had his videography team. So that's the extent of it. That's all I really knew. Uh, he was an older guy. They charge a lot of money from what I've been told. A lot of money. A lot. So I met up with my client prior to the wedding just to go over some details. And she mentioned that the videographer had a permit and permission to basically photograph in these beautiful gardens. And she really wanted to shoot there. And I told her, okay, well, why don't we just do that? And she's like, oh, well, he said that we can't. And so I was like, well, is the, did he give a reason? And she's like, no, he just said that we can't. And so I told her, I'm like, okay, maybe give me his number. Like maybe we can work something out and, and see what location we want because we there's very limited locations where we're at. So anyways, I'm thinking it's not a big deal. I do this all the time, you know, whatever. So anyways, I give the guy a call later that night. And I'm like, hey, I'm the photographer. Very nice to meet you. Um, I... I was told that you have you have permission to shoot in this garden area. Um, is there any way we can maybe work it out? Because she really wants that location. And he's just like, no, we can't shoot there. And I was like, but why? I was like, why? He's like, no, we just can't. We're, we're going to have to find somewhere else. I was like, well, is it if it's an issue for, because of the permit, like I can try to get one. Maybe you guys can go in for the video and do the video in there and we can shoot somewhere nearby. Because I told her because my client really wants to shoot there and she's hiring him, she's paying him. So, and he can shoot there. So, but no, nothing. He was just like, no, he didn't give any explanation. He just said, no, he wouldn't elaborate on it. And I was like, okay, like fair enough. You have, you're the one who has the permit, not me. Like, could we technically have went and shot there and no one would say anything? Of, yeah, absolutely. People do it all the time. Uh, but I just figured like, wouldn't you want like the best for the whole team and for the client and to make things go smoothly and shoot at an already nice place? I don't know, whatever. But anyways, he started to get really annoyed of me and mad at me because I was asking him why we couldn't shoot there. Um, and I was being really polite, honestly. I was just like, okay, like is there, I was really trying to reason and be like, okay, is there any other areas that you would recommend? Like since you do like a lot of this and he's just like, He's like, you're wasting my time. And he starts, he started yelling at me. He's like, he's like, we're not going to shoot there. And this is the end of the conversation. So then he shuts the phone on me. He just, he just shuts the phone in my face. Um, and I was like, mm, okay, this, we're good. okay, this is going to, this is going to be a good, yeah, this is great. Off to a good start. There was no working out the location. And I just feel like we can work together to find a good location that we both want to shoot in you know, video and photography. I feel like we can both just work together, but some people just don't care too, which whatever, it is what it is. So after that conversation, I didn't mention it to my client, to be honest with you. Like, I'm, I'm like, it's almost her wedding. I'm not gonna stress her out. It's not a big deal, whatever. I've, I've dealt with worse. So then uh, she calls me a couple days later and she's like, hey, so I just spoke to the videographer and he has guidelines that he wants you to follow when you're shooting. He said he doesn't want you shooting when he's shooting. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? She's like, he said that you guys have to take turns and you can't use a 35 millimeter lens. Like it's too wide and it's going to get in his way. And he basically doesn't want you shooting his setup. And 
if, if you can take 15 minute turns taking pictures and video, he wants to do it like that. And I was like, <laughs> so it was so awkward. I was like, what? I can't use a 35 millimeter lens, that's all I shoot with. So this guy is over here trying to tell me what kind of lens I can use. I kind of, I got a little bit annoyed. I'm like, who, okay. But it's my client, she's the bride, and I wanted things to run smoothly. So I told her it was no problem. If that's how he did things, we can, this, it's not an issue, okay? I'm, I'm trying to be very easy going here. I'm not trying to stress anybody out before their wedding. I told her it was no big deal, that's fine. We can take turns shooting. Little did I know, that it was gonna be an adventure, quite an adventure that day. Because the day of the wedding, I show up and he had one guy from his team who was actually really nice. He was talking to me, everything was normal, everything was cool, we were working with each other. Probably an hour later, the video team starts to arrive. And so this guy, this guy pulls up. I, I've never seen him before, I didn't know which guy he was, so he gets to the front door and then I'm like, oh hi. And he looks at me, he ignores me, he walks right past me, and I'm like, that's him, that's, oh hey, okay, that's, yeah, that's my guy right there. <laughs> that's the guy that hates me, yeah, did you, we had a conversation over the phone. It wasn't, it was a short one, but it was good. very productive, yeah, <laughs> yes, that's him, okay. So I knew right away it was going to be a long day. So let me let you guys know how we usually do things for weddings. I show up, I meet the video team, we say a couple jokes, hey, like what kind of camera you're using, all that like stuff that we talk about. And then we usually work with each other to make sure I'm not in their way, they're not in my way, vice versa. We we try to set up each other's shots sometimes. Like if sometimes video will we'll set up a shot and I'll be like, hey, can I take a couple pictures? And I'll be like, go ahead. And sometimes I'll set up a shot and I'll be like, hey, video, you guys want to grab some like behind the scenes or anything? And, you know, we just work with each other because we're both working for the same goal and we want to have a nice, easygoing time. And we don't we're not trying to make anything difficult for anybody. We, we both want to succeed, basically. So we just work as a team together, even though we just met each other, even though we don't have to. That's just how it goes. Most creatives are super friendly, super cool. But this experience was the exact opposite of that. I've never in my whole life worked with somebody who made everything so difficult. So let me tell you what this guy did. He walked in with his entourage of five videographers. He had like a drone. He had, literally had everything. Every, anything new that came out that year, he had it. He had something that came out 2050. I don't, he had everything. He had all the gear. He had the cranes and the drones and everything. He had a whole squad. I had only one second shooter with me, which is fine, that's how, you, how I usually do things. So, walks in, and his him and his entire team ignore me the entire time we're at the house. No one says hi to me, no one even looks at me. It's as if I, I was invisible. So, you can imagine, it's a little, it's very different from what I'm used to, but I deal with it. My, you know, my friends, my clients are there, and I just, I, I j I'm just like, I gotta just do my job and I'm, I'm not trying to make friends, so it's fine. But I'm not gonna lie, it was a little bit, it was a little tough to, you know, to not be able to work with video on, on that level. So just like he had talked about over the phone, every shot had to be separated. So he made sure that when I was taking pictures or I set something up, him and his entire team were on the sidelines like this. They're all waiting for me to finish. They wouldn't dare take a picture of anything I set up. And then as soon as I was finished, I was like, oh, you guys, uh, you guys are, like, I'm done. They would go in, rearrange everything. They, like, went and took, they, they took the bridal dress from inside. They took it all the way outside, put it, like, on the porch outside. And they did a whole setup. And, again, I was t told and asked not to take pictures of any of their setups. And they did this for every single thing. And you can imagine how long it took to get one simple shot because everything had to be separated. For instance, when we were doing pictures of of my friend with her gown on, he he was like, okay, we're gonna take pictures. Like, sh basically she needs to like, we'll, we'll tell her when we're done. And I was just like on the side, like I can literally take pictures and we can be wrapped up in like five minutes. But something that would normally take five minutes took like 20 minutes because again, he wanted everything separate and he didn't want me taking pictures of his setup. I dealt with it. It didn't seem that bad in the morning. We did the first look and they talked to me for a first look. They were like, where do you want to stand and everything. And I was like, okay, like make sure I'm, if I'm in your way, let me know. Like it's, it was casual. It was fine. It was cool. I dealt with it. 
Little did I know things were about to get worse. So after we wrapped up being at the house, we were gonna go on location and do bridal pictures. So we decided to meet at the hall because again, we had, we didn't really plan on the location and I, I didn't really have many ideas. So I was just, so he suggested we meet at the hall and we go from there. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. Uh, and also it, there was a flooding advisory. So yeah, that was fun. Uh, we kept it inside basically to meet at the hall. And when we got to the hall, I met up with him and we discussed what we were gonna shoot next. So I basically suggested, why don't we do the bridal party first, once they get off the party bus? Because bridal party, the second they get to the hall, like they're nowhere to be found. Everybody scatters around, everybody has stuff to do. So I suggested it because while they're getting off the bus, we could just take the pictures real quick and then we can focus on the bride and the groom and spend more time doing that. And he agreed. And so we both agreed to that and he was being totally cool, totally normal. I'm like, okay, awesome, great, we're agreeing on something. So a little bit after that, the bridal party arrived in the party bus, the bride and the groom came. And so as we discussed, I went to, you know, wrangle up the guys and the girls and the, you know, bridesmaids and everything. I'm literally running around trying to get everybody together, the, the guys and the girls. We already lost a couple of people. I was so close, I was missing like one person from each group. So we finally got all the guys together and then I was looking for the, the videographers because I'm like, they're really nowhere to be found. Like, where is everybody? And then I look and I see that the main videographer, that guy, was doing a full-on photo shoot with the bride and the groom, like near in the hall without me, not even telling me. He's doing like a whole setup, everything. And... I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of like, okay, what if, why, why are you doing this right now? We need the bride and the groom for the pictures with the groomsmen and the bridesmaids. So I walked on over to him and I was like, hey, um, we really should do the bridesmaids and the groomsmen first, uh, you know, because people are gonna be walking into the hall any minute and we should probably wrap that up. Like, that's what we agreed on. And he looks at me and he's like, don't you ever interrupt my photo shoot. I didn't interrupt you when you were doing your thing. So don't interrupt me. And you can go over there and you can stay there. He pointed towards the other side of the hall. And he's like, you can go over there and you can stay there. And he was like yelling at me in front of everybody. And so I'm standing there being berated by this guy in front of my second shooter, in front of like the guests, in front of my clients. I was, I think I was in shock, to be honest. I've never had somebody speak to me like that, especially while I'm working. And I, I've, I didn't even know what to do. I, again, I think I was just in shock. And so I just thought, okay, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to, am I, am I gonna like yell this guy back? Are we about to fight right now? Cause I could, but you know, it's not gonna look good on me. So I just thought to myself, don't, don't, this guy wants you to argue with him. So I looked at my clients who, by the way, look terrified. They're like, what? It's their wedding day and they see the videographer yelling at photography, you know? So I looked at my clients and I was like, what would you guys like me to do? And I said it like this. I was like, what would you guys like me to do? And my clients were like, uh, hey, like, don't worry about it. Like, we'll wrap up here with him and then we can, we'll go do the bridesmaids and groomsmen pictures. And I was like, okay, that's no problem. I'll see you guys over there. So I walked back didn't say another word. I was really upset, very, very upset. I felt humiliated. And I went to the bathroom and I just, I just started crying. I was like bawling my eyes out. I think because he was making everything so difficult and he was just being so nasty towards me the entire day and I was just dealing with it. And I, I don't know, I just couldn't deal with it anymore. It was just, it was, a, it, it was a lot, you know, you're just trying to do the best job that you can. And I just felt like, why is he doing this? Why is he acting so mean to me? I'm just, I'm just trying to do my job. In the bathroom, there were guests that like, they saw me crying, uh, including the groom's family as well. Like, I think his mom was in there and she was like consoling me and she's, she was really upset. And I didn't want, the thing is, I didn't want to make it like a big deal because it's their wedding. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to do that to them. So I was like, no, I'm totally fine. Like, I'm cool. Don't even worry about it. I, I put on a brave face and I am, I was like, 
I'm gonna finish this job because I know for a fact that he probably wants me to be like this. He wants me to fail he, because maybe, maybe he's mad because he wasn't chosen as the photographer. Maybe he lost a lot of money because of me because he ended up just doing video. Like you never know what these people like have, like they, you never know why they're upset with you. Or he could just be a real jerk, I don't know. But I went back out and I just waited for them to finish. And when he finished, he had the nerve to come back up to me. And he's like, don't you ever do that again? Like, who do you think you are? Blah, blah. He literally came up to me again. After this. After I had, like, I had that little, I, after I, that, all that happened, he came up to me a second time to, then, to yell at me some more. As he's yelling at me, I was like, listen, this is a professional environment. And I'm not going to have this conversation with you here. So that's all I have to say. And I left. After the little confrontation, we actually had to take more pictures of the bread and the groom. And of course, he went first. I mean, even though he just literally went, he did a whole photo shoot. But he took my clients into like a room. It was all glass. So you can see, and it's like right before you enter the hall. Um, it was like this room with like a piano. It was really cute. So we took them in there. He shuts the door behind him, make sure it's closed, you know, maybe he locked it, we don't know. And he basically was, it was like, stay out, no one's coming in here. I, wow, I was, I was like, okay, wow, the level of petty here. Are you teaching a class on this? Because I will take it, I will take your class for free. I'm not going to pay for it, I don't, I don't think it's that good, but yeah. So afterwards, I actually took pictures of the bride and the groom by themselves he did not want to join me. They didn't want to be anywhere near whatever I was doing. Again, it's like I'm a disease. Like no one can go near Jessica. She's like, I don't know, coronavirus, Ebola, all that put together. Swine flu as well. I was like all those diseases put together basically. No one wanted to be near me. I took pictures of the bride and the groom. And then at the end, we did the groomsmen and the bridesmaids pictures, which he was even more mean after that. He... They, they would literally set things up right away do the video and then they would have they would they would be changing people right away on purpose so that I wouldn't get the shot so it's not like if he set it up I could take a shot because he was physically in front of them taking videos you know he would be in my shot I felt like he was doing this purposely so basically he was physically in front of the the, the bridal party taking like with his camera taking the videos and then he'd be like, okay, guys, move here, move here. And I'd be like, and I would have to be like, hey, I didn't get the shot yet. And so they would just kind of all stand there like, okay, like, are you done? And I was like, okay, like, go ahead. Like, we're, we're, we're good to go. And he did this so many times where they would set up something. Like, they set up a shot where uh, the guys and the girls were standing, like, parallel to each other. And then the, the bread and the groom were walking in the middle of them. And she, everyone was cheering. And again, he was... There's no way that I could get that shot because he was like physically standing in the middle of everything and he would do it on purpose <sighs> because after he got the shot, he would still go in and like not allow me to take the picture. So I would have to, I, I, would, I had to be so assertive at that point and be like, hey, nobody move. We still didn't get the shot for photography. So it was extremely difficult and I feel like, again, he was doing this on purpose. I don't think he really, I think he wanted me to fail. I think he wanted me to flop and anyways, afterwards we went inside and I did photos of the venue. And then as I'm taking photos of the venue, the second shooter comes up to me and he's like, Hey, um, just so you know, videos outside doing a whole photo shoot. Cause it's, it's sunny out now. Like the rain is gone and they did like, so they took some really nice pictures. Like my second shooter is over here telling me like, Oh, um, well they actually got like some really nice, you know, golden hour pictures. And I'm like, why did no one tell me? Why did no one tell me? I wouldn't have been taking pictures of cups. I would have went outside and taken the pictures with video. And then by the time that I went outside, it was over. They finished, they wrapped up the photo shoot. So I was, again, again, just little things like that where I'm not being included in things and I feel like it's done with the intent to, you know, harm my work as a photographer. And you could easily say, hey, you should have been on top of it and seeing what everyone's doing and it's not his fault if he wants to go take him. Yeah, you can easily say that. But at the same time, 
video and photography should be working together and we should be supporting each other. There's no reason why me as a photographer should go out of my way to do a photo shoot and do all of these setups without bringing videography into it. I don't think that's very fair. That's just my two cents. Maybe you disagree. But anyways, uh, during the actual event, the reception, the wedding planner was mean to me. Um, the wedding planner actually worked very closely with the video team. Um, for instance, I was standing at the end of the aisle for when the bride walked in. And again, remember, I only had one second shooter. This guy had an, a whole entourage and he had a crane, a video crane on top of my head to make sure he got the perfect shot of them walking down the aisle. But then I have the wedding planner uh, and the other and the video team coming up to me asking me to move because I'm in their way. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm one person standing here on the edge of the aisle, not even, I'm hardly even in any one shot. You have a crane right above me, what, what, what other shot do you need? And so after I told the, the wedding planner and the, videograph the other videographers that I would, like I'm not gonna move, I told them not, I'm not gonna move straight up, I'm not moving. So you better, you, you better call somebody, you better, I don't know, God himself has to move me at this point because I'm not going anywhere. And I told my second shooter not to move anywhere either. I'm like, you don't go anywhere because they were getting a little cozy with my second shooter. I'll tell you more about that later. So <laughs> the entire event, same thing as before, um, he, the video team was constantly getting in all of my shots and I swear to you guys, I understand he's doing video and he has to move and get the shots, but I know when someone's doing it just to be in my shot and when someone's just like, hey, I just need to get a simple video. He was literally, for the slow dance, for the slow dance when the sparklers were coming up, you know what he did? Instead of like, he okay, he did the circle thing. He like did a little circle video around them. He would like go in a loop around them, which is cute. That's a cute video. He did this the entire time time okay don't tell me that's not being that's not trying to like ruin my shot instead of thinking like hey photography might need a wide shot with no video person in it like my bride's not gonna want you in the picture no he was constantly in my way he would see where i was and he would go in front of me and i knew no matter where i was standing he was there he was like my shadow but he was stronger than my shadow <laughs> My God, he was so talented. He was so talented at just being where I am. I mean, my God, I mean, he's great. He's good. Yeah, he's good at it. He's talented. He's a talented man. Through this entire process, no one from the video team spoke to me. Not one person. That guy in the morning that was talking to me didn't say a word to me. It's as if he didn't even know me anymore. Uh, and it was, it was tough. It was, it was tough. I'm not gonna lie. Towards the end of the night. Me and the second shooter packed up and then we went out to eat just because I was, I didn't even eat. I didn't eat the entire day. I was like so stressed out and I couldn't even think about food. I was, I was pretty upset. We went out to eat and the second shooter tells me that he had a wonderful experience with the video team. He's like, yeah, man, they were talking to me the whole time and they actually offered to let me use their gear. Like they were telling him, hey, do you want to use some of our lenses? And if you need anything, let us know. And then they gave him a business card. And he's like, yeah, they were really nice to me. And I was sitting there, I'm like, did you, are we, were we at the same wedding? We definitely didn't have the same experience and I was telling him exactly what happened. And he's like, yeah, man, you know, I don't know what, like, what was going on with that. And you know what he told me? My second shooter told me. He's like, you know, do you think it was because you were the only female on the creative team? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, because the, the rest of the guys were fine with me, but they just didn't like you and they didn't talk to you. And I'm like, well, I, didn't, I didn't even think about it, to be honest with you, because I never like to think it's because I'm a girl. Like I never, I, that's, not, that's not my first inclination of something like, oh, he doesn't like because I'm a girl. You know, it's just, I, I just thought he hated everybody and I was just the, the person of the day, like the lucky person. It never occurred to me like, oh, hey, it's, I mean, I was the only female but it's, I've never thought of that before. I've done so many weddings where I was the only female and it, it, it was fine, like we were all friends, like we, you know, it was never an issue. For me, you know, I replay that time in my head so many times, I'm like, I could have done this differently, I could have done that, but 
in the moment you just you don't know what to say or do in the moment you know we're sitting here you're watching this video you're you're probably thinking a thousand things i could have said or done and i know and i know i know i understand but in the moment when you're actually physically there and when someone's yelling at you all common sense goes out the window you you can't think straight all everything that you learned up until then you forget like walking i dropped to the floor i don't know how to do that anymore but the one thing is to just always stay professional your reputation is very important don't let somebody like that bring you down and it's it's okay to be assertive and firm with how you want to do things and to communicate your thoughts and what your you know guidelines are in terms of shooting i say be reasonable make sure it also works for videography because you guys are supposed to be a team and it's supposed to be a fun experience it's not supposed to be like oh he's out to get me like I got, he's trying to get in my shop purposely like that's are you trying to play games like what are you serious i'm so good at mario kart i will you don't even know you don't want to go there so but there's people out there there's people out there who want to see you fail and will do things as much as we want to believe there's so much good in this world, there are people like that and you just have to watch out for them. While retaining your reputation, while retaining your professionalism, and while still doing the best job that you can, that you can possibly do. Because at the end of the day, I was there for my clients who are my friends and I wanted to get them the, the best pictures possible. And also, for anyone wondering, my clients found out about that situation and other people were telling them what happened. And... Also, during the event, people were coming up to me and making sure I was okay. I guess word got around I don't, of me crying in the bathroom. I really tried to keep that under wraps, you know, like crying in the stall. But, um, yeah, so people were coming up to me, asking me if I'm okay, like giving me water, like making sure everything was good. People checked up on me and they were amazing. Groom's family, bride's family, everybody was so supportive of me. Even after the wedding, I still had the, the bride and groom's family coming up to me, making sure I'm okay, apologizing. And appar yeah, apparently my clients found out and then called up the videographer and were so upset and so mad at him. Like, how could you treat our photographer like this? She's our friend. Like, they were stick sticking up for me a lot. So... They, they told me everything and they apologized to me and I was like, don't even worry. Like you guys had no control over this. Like totally not your fault. This guy was so sneaky. He's over there setting up things, doing photo shoots behind my back with no care in the world. Um, do I think he was trying to sabotage me? Yes, I think he was bitter that he was not chosen as a photographer because that's what he normally does. And he just, he couldn't have, maybe he just didn't like me being the photographer. And he wanted to make me look bad. I don't know. We don't know. That's just my personal opinion on the situation. As somebody who lived through that, you know, who experienced it, that's what I personally feel. And I just, yeah, I think I took away from his business and he wasn't happy with it. But we don't know. It could be a number of things. Maybe he's just, and I heard from other people, he's not really a nice person to, the, to other people. So I think coupled with that, it was a recipe for a disaster. You know what I mean? Do I think that they treated me differently because I was a female? Honestly, no, but I just, I don't know why they were like buddy-buddy with my second shooter and they hated me and they didn't talk to me. That's the one question I have. I, you know, I'm pretty funny. But I don't, I don't know. We seem, I don't, that's the one thing I just don't know. But I don't think it was because I was a female. I think they just didn't like me because, because I'm me. <laughs> and I just happened to be a girl. All right, so that's the end of the story. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have been through something like this, I wanna hear your story. Share it down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully it won't be something like this. I'm, I'm over this stuff. <laughs> I'm over it. Anyways, bye guys.